Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to be including a little bit of metallic watercolour with our arrangement that we're painting today. Have you ever tried dried flowers? Um, I paint all sorts of flowers but we haven't done dried ones before here on YouTube so we're going to have a go at a lovely little dried arrangement. So grab your paints and let's get started. We're going to create a piece of art today because I, uh, I wonder if you're the same as me, but I sometimes get a little bit um, sort of nervous about the idea of actually like displaying any of my work. Um, I'm just gonna bring these down so you can see me mixing. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a funny thought thing, isn't it? Um, we all like to paint, but then does it stay sort of hidden in your sketchbook the whole time? Um, of course, my job is largely painting commissions and painting wedding stationery, all that kind of stuff, so I, I rarely sort of even think about putting my stuff on the wall. So we're going to change that today. We're going to be brave and we're going to create something really, really nice using dried flowers as our inspiration. So I've created a, what could generously be called a sludge colour here, using yellow ochre, raw umber and a little bit of French ultramarine blue just to create quite a cold colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up layers of dried flowers and dried sort of foliage and, and stems to create a really nice layered up piece and we're going to add some metallic watercolour to the end. So I'm going to begin with, this is called a rigger brush, it's a long slender bristle and it's from um, the Pro Art range which is my, my favourite and I'm just going to go for it so it's just wonderful for drawing stems. And this is a very sort of faint dilute colour because when we layer things up in watercolour we need to start off with our lightest colours. So I am just sort of building a stem up that's going to go the full length of the page. And I'm going to paint in with my size 4 brush, some sort of, um, I guess they're almost like a, a type of eucalyptus, imagine a sort of dried eucalyptus shape or maybe even like honesty, that's a beautiful dried sort of plant with big discs in this colour. As I said this is a sort of slight sort of fantasy piece taking inspiration from the colours of dried flowers and we will also be using some of these ones that I have with me as a reference as well. So I think this is one to sort of sit back and enjoy, get inspired and then who knows and you might want to create something of your own just like it. So I'm just filling in these little outlines that I paint and then of course if you suddenly go I think I'd quite like to add a stem or two you can always get the rigger brush back into play and add in another one, no problem. Whilst that dries, I'm going to mix up a new colour. So I am using tones that are all sort of inspired by this warm, earthy set of pinks and creams. So using a sort of red and orange and ochre tones in my palette is a really good starting point. But I am going to just, from the other end of my palette, bring in a little bit of Alizar and Crimson to get a slightly more blush feel. And then, of course, we can always try a bit of burnt sienna to again bring in a bit of a bit more earthiness so it's very much a sort of 
try it out as you go. If you want a piece of scrap paper on the side to try out what your colour looks like on the page first, that's a really good idea. And the other thing is to make sure you've got enough colour. So I'm just now sort of dolloping in more colour, which is going to momentarily change it and then it's going to bring it back to what it was. There we go. Okay, and then we just need this to dry fully and we can start our next layer. This is now nice and dry and I'm going to get to my rigger brush once again. In terms of the size, this is a size zero, but you can get them in a number of different sizes. I think I just want that to be a tiny bit pinker. A tiny bit. Of course, when it goes on really dilute, we're not going to see much of it anyway. Okay, I think that's good. Right, wet my brush, get that in there, and this time I'm going to paint in stem that goes out to the side there, as well as coming out there as well. Now this time I'm going to do a very different type of shape, something a little bit more like these long slender pieces. So I'm just going to move those to the side so I can get a bit of a better angle here. So just by squashing the brush down I can create a lovely slender leaf. Now I can also just remove any pooling of water by cleaning off my brush and dabbing it there. And if that's too thin, then you can do two strokes and create a slightly larger leaf for yourself. So you see that little extra pool of water there? If you just dab your brush off on the kitchen roll and you can just pick it up and take it away. So a lot of people ask me about how to get rid of those extra sort of little pooling bits. Okay, so we've got our first little overlap. And that's really nice because the shape underneath is keeping its crisp edges really, really nicely because it is dry. If it wasn't 100% dry, we wouldn't get that. Now we come to the cross section. And it's up to you, some people prefer painting their leaves starting from the branch and extending out. And some people prefer to start sort of way off in the air there and bring their leaves down. I think, I, I don't mind either way, but I do think the resulting leaves are a bit nicer for me anyway, if I start them off in the air, at least from that angle, but that isn't always the case. So again, you see I'm just picking up those tiny little pools of paint and it's just resulting in a lovely, smooth, even finish. Okay, so that is our second layer. We need that to dry and we'll mix up another colour for the next layer. Now I've got a bit of a sort of plummy aubergine colour. Um, this is a mixture of 
burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, and a bit of alizarin and crimson that's just out of shot. And this time I'm gonna paint in some of these lovely little single uh, strands, and I'm not really sure what they are, but they're gorgeous. And they're gonna come just soaring through, and this is always a little bit daunting, um, but let's just go for it, shall we? Really nice. And then I'll put in, so we've got one that just sort of comes up to there. And one like that. And I'm going to use a two tenths brush to create the little flower head at the top there. And the way I'm going to do that is just by sort of painting a central one and then starting to build up a kind of base cup. It's a little bit similar to sort of shaping and painting the peony. Kind of nice. Just add a little bit of darkness extra in there. Okay, let's have a go with the other one. So I can't actually see where the end of the stem went, but I think I'm just gonna, yeah, it's sort of faded out there. I'm going to just extend it a fraction. Everyone holds their breath. So we'll try. I'm just sort of creating a little cup shape there and that works rather nicely. A little bit of darkness from the center there. Okay, those look really nice. We're gonna stick with this color and we're going to paint in a few more stems. And all the time, just thinking about mixing up the variation of the kind of leaf I'm painting. So we'll have this one coming up there. And just sort of playing around with the different sort of styles of growth that come off some of these dried pieces. So I've got this one here, which is a bit like a little ear of corn. So I'm gonna use that as my inspiration for this one here. And I'm gonna use my size two brush. Actually, you know, I might use an even smaller brush. I might use three tenths. Yeah, that's nice. Because the great thing about rounded point brushes is you can get these beautiful broad strokes even from these really seemingly small brushes. So these colors are still really nice and dilute but they are getting a little bolder and we are basically layering up until we get to the point where we're actually going to add some more well, not some more, we haven't added any more, some metallic watercolour to these. And the metallic watercolour is quite opaque, so it's going to sit really nicely on top of all of this. But if you are doing a piece like this and you're layering up colour, you need to start really delicately and light, because otherwise you'll have nowhere to go. Okay, that is very nice. We're going to do one more in this colour and then we'll be ready to add our metallics. And I'm just going to mix up a little bit more so you can see me mix it again. Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine, and go into this very sort of bluey, shadowy mix. And then suddenly Alizarin Crimson comes in and it becomes something a bit more plummy. Lovely. 
I think if you are um, new to using one of these long rigger brushes then it might be worth having a little practice before you sort of launch into creating a, a whole piece. But they are just wonderful. Okay, and I'm going to do some nice sort of rounded shaped leaves. So again, clean off that brush, pick up any excess there so you don't get sort of puddling and pooling. It seems like quite a like a tedious thing to do, but it just means that the result is so much nicer. And again, if you want, you can start from the branch and work your way out. That one for me means I have to sort of do a little outline and fill it in if I'm doing it that way. But sometimes doing a little outline means you've got a bit more control with the brush. So my intention so far is to have a sort of a little bit of overlap but not not a huge amount because I love the airiness between the branches and I think that is where we're going to stop with our watercolor now that's all really really nice and very happy with that but it's time to get in our old friend the metallic watercolor and I love the fine tech palette which is this one here and it's just beautiful and it's got really sort of fantastic pans of, of color and I'm going to go for two tones we've got a copper here and then this really lovely pale gold which I'm also just sort of doesn't matter that the water I've got has got a slightly warm tone to it because if anything that's just a bonus so I'm just going to mix these up adding lots of water in there to both of them and that gives us a nice thick consistency because we really want these paints to go on in quite a concentrated form Okay, and we are going to use this one here as our inspiration. So I'm going to send a bit of gold right up the middle. So I've got my rigger brush being covered in that thick paint there. Just to make sure I've got a nice slender tip, not too much of a blob on the end. And I'm just gonna tilt this because it makes it slightly easier for me. And I want to sort of aim to go right up the middle. Now this paint, it dries and suddenly really starts to shimmer and shine. So right now as you're watching, it might look a bit sort of insipid and pale but don't be fooled. So I'm, I'm mimicking the sort of seed pods that are coming off this lovely branch. And I'm looking for the spaces for my, uh, for my sort of ears of corn or whatever they are, these little pods. I know they're more sort of knowledgeable of you in terms of gardening and flowers will be going no 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 that's not what you call them um, anyway so I'm just going to paint in some lovely gold details 
and because I'm using it nicely and thickly, it's going to be coming over really nicely. And I'm just, I love how the sort of the seeds, just the cases open a little bit. So I'm just reflecting that with some of my strokes being two parted. Now, something very exciting is I am going to be turning this piece into a print for anyone to buy. And the way I'm going to do that is we're going to have the watercolour underneath. Um, that will be a print. And then I'm going to individually hand paint. Every time I get an order, we're going to individually hand paint the metallics over the top, which is just so exciting. So the episode uh, notes below will have a link for you to be able to purchase this print yourself. Because I know that a lot of you love to paint along, but some of you just like to to watch and uh, you know this is a way you can be part of it too so that is really exciting and and in a way this is my sort of mission statement to go I'm going to be brave enough to put my own art on the wall and I'm selling a print <laughs> in doing so and so why not you too create something that you're proud enough of to put on the wall okay now I've got my copper watercolour and I am going to paint in a, a stem that's going to travel up there. We'll have a little branch that goes off there. And this, whoops, a daisy, gosh. Everyone hold their breath. Just need to stop flinging my paints around. Okay, this time we're going to do a really nice copper leaf. That's got a little bit of a curl. And if you want to know where to get your hands on a, a fine tech palette like this, then there's links in the episode notes. You can choose from so many different colors. Um, I've got many more palettes in my studio and I'm a big fan. I like how nicely sort of opaque these paints go. Now just keep looking for the gaps. lovely now. I don't know about you but it feels like we need something just down here and I'm going to do that in the gold. What I love about the metallic colours also is they really do seem to reflect the, uh, the, the dried flowers in their true tones. This time, I'm going to create a lovely little tuft with my three tenths brush here. So you can see that a lot of the designs that we've created here today have been through sort of simple mark making. But 
there's not a huge amount of um, in detail sort of painting technique it's just a case of getting confident with being able to sort of swish your brush from thin to thick and really sort of be able to press down the belly of your brush but other than that it's pretty simple And there we go, beautiful dried flower inspired metallic watercolour piece of art that you can have. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you create a lovely piece of art that you can be proud of. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because without that I could not make these videos that everyone can enjoy. So if you enjoyed it then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you got on. And of course if you subscribe then you will never miss another video. Until next time, bye!